I'm looking here uh, at the uh, cash uh, cash uh, test uh, app uh, GUI app that uh, tests the cash server uh, or the cash store in memory cash store. So I have a 20 million object rig here loaded in 83 seconds. Um, so I currently have uh, 13 million objects there. Okay because some objects have already expired and I'm sitting at 11 gigabytes of RAM. Okay, so now let's see what happens now when I click the garbage collector button that will trigger a full garbage collector. Look at the CPU usage. Look, six seconds. Okay, I want you to remember this number. Six seconds, 20 million objects inserted, 13 survived. Okay, let's click on this button one more time okay around three seconds right now okay the second time because it keeps uh, deleting those objects they keep expiring that's how the cache store works and this is the NFX cache store okay so if I click the garbage collector button again it will do again to complete pause of the process for 2.5 milliseconds this is a server mode garbage collector uh, with the background, um, you know, <coughs> uh, or whatever it's called, the background, so the least blocking GC that you could get. So my point is this, there is no way, th this was only 20 million objects, look at this, look at those spikes. 20 million objects and look where my graph came to. So what if what happens if I want to store 300 million objects here? I can't do that, it's not going to work. You cannot store that many objects in managed environments, period. Well. I cannot live with this limitation. The reason is because I need, I have a database software that I design, uh, database servers that work in the social networks and I do a lot of other things like neural networks and stuff like that. I need to have hundreds of millions of nodes in memory, residents sitting there for a long time. Uh, the uh, managed environments, uh, .NET and Java, they just don't allow you to do that. So what to do? Other people use out-of-process services like Memcache, Redis, and everything. They're slow. Well, you say, oh, they're, they're fast. Well, they're fast when you compare them to the typical .NET abyss code, what I call, you know, whether that is slow and inefficient to begin with. But I need it to be way faster than working through the TCP socket with the out-of-process Memcache. So what do I do? So I created something called a pile, okay, you know, like a heap, I call it a pile. This is a 100% managed, 100% managed uh, uh, .NET, 100% managed .NET code. It is a custom memory manager. What it does, it allows you to get and set, get and uh, put and get back objects by the pointer, the pile pointer, which is a struct. Let me run the pile, let me activate it. And the garbage collector is doing a lot of crazy stuff right now, suffering from that. Let me do the garbage collector. Oh my god. Okay, I may have lost my video. I don't know if the video recording is still, the video capture is still going on, but but uh, um, it, it's running in the same process as that cache server. That's why it's it's um, okay. So finally, it has released all that. So you you notice how long it takes, okay? With 20 million objects. Now we're back to one gigabyte right now, okay? So let's do this. Let's put a hundred objects in the pile. Okay, now you see how fast it is. Now let's put 500 objects in the pile. 500,000 objects in the pile, I beg your pardon, from one thread. So we average 360 transactions a second from one thread. Look at the CPU usage. Look at it. Okay, so now what's going to happen now is that I click the GC button and my GC is non existent. Okay. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to put eight threads, each inserting 500,000, and I'm going to do a parallel insert in the pile. And I'm going to get around 900,000 900, transactions a second. Now let me check this. 
I have five million records already in my pile. Let me check this and then let me repeat the process. So now I get uh, somewhere around one million. Uh, I think the screen capture software slows it down a little bit because it, it does the context switching of the threads and stuff. Um, uh, but that's okay. It illustrates the point. If I do my GC, I have 9 million objects. You see the GC is instant. So now I have created this tool here that I'm going to feed with, let's say, four workers. And I'm going to do that many objects. Okay. So right now it's adding every second around 600, you know, um, 600,000 uh, objects a second. Look at the memory consumption. Don't you think there is something strange here? The memory barely moves. I have 23, 20, 24 million and I only have 2 gigabytes. Okay. So you multiply this times this, this is because those objects are so small. Now, but wait a second, what happens if I do this, if I do a get? So that did a get transaction on, on a single thread at four, around 400, well, 358,000 reads a second on, on one thread. And... Um, that returned this object. Well, it turns out that CLR objects, when they are in their native format, they consume way more RAM than when they are on the pile. So how does the pile work? The pile serializes the objects using Slim Serializer. The Slim Serializer is the custom serializer that we use everywhere in NFX for internal purposes. It is so efficient and it does packing and everything. It packs strings, it packs everything. So it packs this structure, it packs this structure, I do the size of operator on it, to 224 bytes. Okay? So if you do an, an analysis how many bytes this structure would take in, in, in a CLR heap, you would get way more than that because you see it has longs, it has three longs, three ints, uh, three boolean flags, some binary data which is null, it's pointer to byte array and some strings and everything. But you see I am already at 80 million objects and my RAM hardly moves. Now let me add some load to it. Let me let me add, or rather I should do it here, let me add two kilobytes of stuff. Now my payload, my throughput is going to fall down because I have, I've added way more payload and my memory consumption starts to increase. But if I do this and then I start deletion of what I've inserted, this is all multi-threaded, okay? So that tells you how efficient the interlocking of threads is. So I have those multiple workers um, doing this. You see, so that it started to delete. You see those negative deltas here. So we're back at this. So if we scroll this up, scroll this down, start, start adding some more objects to the pile. So uh, I can easily, so right now I allocated 17 gigabytes and I only utilize six. The rest is free, just, this is because I deleted that many objects, okay? I've created many uh, large objects and then I suddenly deleted them. So that kept the space because it says favor speed, so it will try to retain those segments. So what it does, it allocates those segments. Every segment has 256 megabytes, it's all configurable of course, and then uh, it will manage this memory for you, so you can even crawl the segment here. So we have crawled 114 million chunks, and then we have compressed 6 million chunks into 161,000 chunks. It has joined those little small chunks where it could into, into larger chunks. And uh, the free size is 8 gigabytes and use size is, uh, the use size is 8 gigabytes. 
and the whole crawl took 345 milliseconds, which is instantaneous. Well, this crawl operation, you would never call it from your from your actual application. This is just for this app to show the statistics. Now, if I click the GC button, this does a full-blown Microsoft GC on all generations. Look, instantaneous, 9 milliseconds. Look, I click on it, 9 milliseconds, okay? 129 million objects in RAM and then I can get every object so, so here I get my objects okay I'm trying to add 500,000 objects from this thread and I get this let's say I get it 8,000 times I get this object in a loop here so this is a smaller object it averages at 333 a second well probably this is not not OV doesn't have enough combinations or iterations to, to, to calculate the latency. Okay, here we go. So 800,000 times in two uh, seconds, 372,000 reads a second. That is turning that pointer, which is two integers, into a full-blown .NET object, hydrating a .NET object again from the pile. So the pile is a byte array. Think about it this way. It's a byte array which is managed through a high-level interface that has methods like get, put, the get method takes a pointer, returns a CLR object. The put method takes a CLR object and gives you the pile pointer back. Now a few words about the pile pointers. The pile pointers are two kinds. They're either local, like here, you see this L in the beginning, or distributed. If it's a distributed pointer, then it can point to a different node. That, that tells you that you can now have a heap which is distributed between uh, different computers. So let's say you have 512 uh, gigabytes of RAM on every node and you have t 10 nodes. So you have now among 10 nodes you have 5 terabytes of RAM addressable in this unified way. Okay. And you don't have to use a distributed pile. You can use local pile. This is a local pile. It stores the pile of piles those objects up on the local heap, on the managed heap. So again, if we go here, you see we are at 16 gigabytes right now in this process. But hey, it, it stores around 200 million objects right now. And my GC is instantaneous. Okay. So now let me stop it. Okay, and what's going to happen now? Uh, I'm going to purge it. Look, I'm going to I have purged. I purged all the references. I purposely did not clear this list box here. So those are pile pointers still pointing somewhere, but the memory has been purged. So let me try to get it. Okay, I get pile access violation. This is a managed exception. This is my exception, pile access violation exception. That tells you bad segment. There is no such a segment. Okay. Now, let me put. Uh, if if I put some other stuff in there, if I put some other stuff, let's say let's put some payload size here and activate it for a few minutes. Okay. So we have activated. We have put some payload. Those pointers are now on. Or okay, let me deactivate. Oh yeah, I did deactivate. So those pointers are now invalid. See? Because uh, they are pointing to some some other um, because it's okay, let it grow to the 28th segment here. Okay, 31. That is good enough. Okay, you see the segment number 28. So even if the segment exists, pile access violation does not point to valid uh, user object chunk. Okay, so this reference here, this pile pointer, which is a struct, let me signify it one more time. It is a struct, it's a value type, which is passed via a stack a byte copy, okay, when you pass it. So a garbage collector does not have to collect it. That's so cool, uh, you know, because you have now uh, a, a very um, tight data structure that represents your big object that otherwise would have taken much more memory and would have caused garbage collector to 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 go and visit all of the references within its body now i don't have to do it because i have serialized it and the whole trick here is this 
This is all because of the slim serializer, which is so fast that it does so many. Um, it do, it does so many um, um, uh, transactions a second that it is blazingly fast. So um, if I do look 640,000 transactions a second for an object like this that has ID, first name, last name, date of birth, balance date, and bin data. So I think this first guy is larger. Yes, so the transactions a second falls to the, around 400,000 a second. It's still not bad. Look, look at this object. This is a pretty big object now. It has three double, three long, three integers, three booleans, uh, bin data, which is a byte array, date, uh, date, I think it's an object array. Then I populate those structures if I put some payload variants here. Let's try doing that. Let's try doing that. So let me put a 3,000 bytes in every object. Now let me create 212,000 objects in 141 a second. This is on a single thread. See, this barely moved. This CPU usage comes from the video recording software that I use here. Look, so this is this is insane. So what I have now is this. And if I try to deserialize it, it will say, see, it says bin data 3000. And it still does 349 reads on a single thread. Look, this is a single thread I'm talking about. So this is orders of magnitude faster than any serializer that I know of that does full graph serialization. That is with cyclical references, all of that stuff. Because uh, don't compare this to, to protobuf or whatever, the Google framework and uh, stuff like Thrift and others, because it is way faster than, th than those. I mean, it, it's not faster than protobuf.net. The protobuf is not a full object serializer. Slim serial serializer that I use here, it is a full object graph walker. You can put any kind of object graphs in it and it will serialize it to a byte array. Well, of course, you have to be careful. If you put too many references in there, it will serialize all of the references. You need to understand what you do. But what I'm saying is that you can serialize, let's say, an abstract syntax tree where the child has a node to its parent and the parent has a list of children. It will do just fine. As long as it is a segregated object graph, it will do any kind of graph of any kind of complexity for you. Okay, And you don't need to put any stupid attributes in your code. Now, this is the local pile. That means that it stores it in memory. You know, like just, just like your .NET code, when you have an object in memory, you need to marshal it. You cannot just upgrade your software without upgrading the contents of your memory. You know what I'm saying? That's why I use Slim Serializer. Now, a different kind of serializer is going to be used for the distributed pile. That is because in the distributed pile, you can change the version of your DLL and you still would want to read your object back. Of course, the performance there is going to be a bit slower, okay? But it's not going to be 10 times slower, maybe twice slower. But what this shows me so far is that now it is very uh, possible to, and look at this garbage collector. The garbage collector, again, it's, 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 it's fast. You know, it, it, it does all of the, look, look at this. Two milliseconds, and we're back to 54 gigabytes of uh, available memory here. Um, so on this machine, I can now allocate 600 million objects, small objects like this. Like I show, oh, I get access violation because I have cleared everything. And that would allow me to build a different kind of um, applications that can uh, store mil hundreds of millions of objects on this on commodity machine. This is a commodity machine. This is not a server. It has 64 giga gigabytes of RAM, but at the same time, I can now let's say store a neural network that has 300 million nodes in memory, and then I can attach it to a different in you know network of other nodes, each of which has 300 million nodes in it, and then it can exchange messages using the glue protocol that we have in NFX, and it can do efficient computations in real time. Now, if you try to store, how do you try to store 300 million .NET objects in RAM, you would have needed one terabyte of RAM. A, B, the garbage collector would have choked. You cannot store 300 million long-lasting objects in the managed heap. That's it. 
Now you can do that with a pile, and I think that pretty much outlines what this um, uh, piece of software does. Uh, thank you for watching.